What's up guys, Sportside here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play the F-104 in War Thunder. But before we get into it, remember to subscribe if you do like this video, and if you have any questions, remember to comment them down below, and I'll answer them within a few days. Anyway, let's get right into it. So first I'm going to be getting into some pros and cons of the aircraft. So its speed and its climb rate are very similar to the F-4 Phantom, and while being at 10.0, the F-104 is able to compare to the Phantom, which is at 10.3 and 10.7. Now, the reason why it's at 10.0 is because its missile loadout is pretty horrible. You only get AIM-9Bs, which is the American starter missile, at least for the F-104A. And these, even with a good shot, will only be able to hit 1 out of 15 of the time um, that you fire them, because most planes at your BR, which will generally be 10.0 to 10.7, will have a radar warning, so they'll be able to know when a missile is coming at them. And they'll also have flares and they'll also have good maneuverability so they can easily outturn or dodge these missiles and they will know that they're coming. So because your missiles aren't that good, most of your kills are going to have to be gun kills. This might be a problem though if you do try to dogfight in this, which you should not do. Um, and I'll show you guys the difference between being a dogfighter and a support fighter uh, in a second here, but you're going to have to be going mostly for gun kills. Problem with this, this aircraft cannot turn very well, you won't be able to get your gun on point unless you're already tracking the enemy. So you're gonna have to go for more of a boom and zoom support fighter role, which I'll show you guys how to do. And because you only get 750 rounds in your 6,000 round per minute gun, you need to make sure to take relatively short bursts. And if you can, just try to get behind the aircraft so it's an easy shot. Now I'm gonna be getting into some air RB matches to show you guys what not to do and a lot of common mistakes that I see with this jet and how to actually play this jet as effectively as it can be played. So now that we have some enemies in the air over here, I'm going to be showing you guys what a dogfight is and what a support fight is. So a dogfight is when you just go straight into it and don't really do much. So I'm just going to let that target go. I'm not going to turn in on it. Now, I do see some people turning in on it, even though that is absolutely okay. Don't know what that Buccaneer is doing, but even though that is the absolutely wrong thing to do and I'm trying to show what not to do, I'm still just not going to do it. And we see a Su-17 here, and I'm just going to try to dogfight this. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to go, because it does kind of suffer, I think. Oh wait, no, that's the Su-7 that suffers from the main problems that the F-104 suffers from. So I'm just going to turn into it here. And as you can see, our really bad turning speed is not helping. He already turned 90 degrees relative to us, and he's just flying away. So I'm just going to throw a missile at him and see how this goes. We'll lead the missile a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, he has RWR, so he is turning away for it. And that missile is just not going to hit. Because we don't have RWR and we weren't paying attention. We weren't looking around. We were just focusing on that one jet. We got shot down by a missile. So that's what not to do. So what to learn from that? Make sure that you stay up relatively high, stay away from most people, and you have to rely on your speed. Don't rely on your turning like most other jets. Also, you need to be very um, cautious of what's going on around you, and generally stay away from the battle. Because you do have that high speed, you can pick off fighters that are in dogfights, and this will allow you to pick and choose your fights more, which will give you a higher win to loss ratio. So now we are on a 10.7 LL main match, and I'm gonna be showing you guys what you should do. So first, I'm just gonna start up and say, get 20 minutes worth of fuel. It's a perfect balance between maneuverability um, because the more fuel you have, the more weight your aircraft's gonna have and the less maneuverable it's gonna be. So I need a good mixture of maneuverability and time to just loiter around the battlefield. And 20 minutes seems to be perfect. It'll give you enough fuel to last most of the game, usually around 70% of the game, um, if it does stretch out all the way. So that does give you a pretty good amount of time to be flying and it also won't weigh down your aircraft much so you can rely on the speed that you knew, that you do need to rely on. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to climb maybe about like 15 to 40 degrees away from the um, airfield and away from the center of the map and I'm just going to climb relatively as high as I can. Now I don't like to go above 7,000 meters, I usually like to stay between um, six to seven thousand right in that kind of pocket there of altitude because it gives you enough distance so that fighters can't just kind of 
shoot right up to you and kill you, and you also get to look at the enemy fighters to see if they're shooting missiles at you, uh, to see if they're losing all their energy or, or they are about to lose all their energy so you can dive on them. And it just gives you more reaction time and more response time to make good decisions. And I did make a mistake because I was um, ground pounding in the F-104 earlier. I accidentally left in armored targets. Now this is good if you just want to focus on ground targets, which is not what I'm doing here. So it's not good. Make sure that you do either use default or air targets if you are trying to play RRB as a fighter. Alright, so we are at a good altitude and other than that MiG-21, there's nothing even remotely near as high as us. So I'm just going to level out here a little bit and just look down so we can see that we have a few targets here and this is what I mean by support fighting you just kind of loiter above all the other enemies and you wait for them to get into a vulnerable position so you can go down and provide a little bit of support maybe you'll slow them down for a teammate maybe you'll just do some damage but you generally won't be able to get 100% kills unless you do find someone in a very vulnerable position like maybe this Yak-38 that's just traveling in a straight line so I might be able to get good shots on this Yak-38, I just need to line it up. So I'm going to kick in some afterburner and as you can see I just dove down enough to where I'm basically behind all the enemies and this will give me a good selection of what targets I want. So I'm just going to switch over to the Su-17 and I missed some of my shots but that's fine. Because now I have enough speed to just climb back up and I can look behind me. Again, you, remember you do need to make sure that you are relatively conscious of what's going on around you so you don't get killed by a missile like that Su-17 just tried to do to me there. Um, and yeah, now we can basically just run away and climb back up. Alright, now we have another Yak-38 down there, but I'm gonna go for this one right here. Uh, it is a really tricky shot that I'm gonna have to pull off. That's just because it's the situation that I'm in. I'm gonna spool up a missile just in case. It should lock on pretty quickly. Let's get that off and bop dead now to get a good missile shot with the aim 9b which is generally one of the worst missiles in the game you need to be in a pretty close range i'm gonna say usually less than one and a half kilometers and they have to be just going straight they can't be maneuvering if they are chasing a friendly jet that's generally not a good thing to shoot a missile at uh, with the aim 9b because they will be maneuvering and the aim 9b just doesn't turn it does not like to turn so what you need to do is you need to go in for kills where they're just going in a blatant straight line just trying to get somewhere and then you go in from the kill from a short range range so their RWR or their just general eyesight won't be able to catch it in time because if they are just going in a straight line they're generally probably not looking right behind them. So we have another F5 right here and I'm going to go in for another gun kill. And don't mind my missile being spooled up already, I just like to be able to spool it up. So I did get a crit on that on the tail, so he's not going to be able to maneuver much. And like I said, this is a support fighter. You won't be able, because your turning speed is so bad, you won't be able to get really good um, kills in one pass. You're generally just going to be whittling down the enemy, you know, taking off a tail here, setting one on fire there. Basically just making them easy targets for your teammates to go and sweep up. But that is completely fine because you do have the speed to make sure that you won't die. So I did get one kill and one assist so far. The game is pretty close to being over and I'm still not dead because I was able to use my speed to my advantage and not get hit much. See here we can get a pretty good hit. That was just bad luck. And I'm just going to keep basically doing what I'm doing here. now. Like 17 as long as it doesn't turn into me perfect it's turning away we can catch it again now if i did have uh air target belt loaded for my machine gun it would probably have gotten that mig 17 kill because i did get a hit but it over pen so that's not good this is a perfect situation right here for a gun kill except i missed it i was a little too low but that's fine because i can just outrun it again and it probably doesn't have any missiles left if it does i'm looking right at it so i would be able to dodge it that doesn't so it's turning away and this f-104 right here is taking turns volleying it with me and so is that one so we're just gonna keep whittling it down until it finally dies and there we go that f-104 finally took out its tail and it was able to crash so what we got to do is we're just gonna climb back up now we are kind of low on fuel so I'm just gonna go back to the base and refuel 
Now also because I see a lot of people messing up landings, what you want to do for a landing here is you want to be going as fast as you can to get to the base so you don't get shot down and you want to wait until you're relatively close-ish to the base like right here is generally where I like to pop out my air brakes and then do a little bit of these turns where I just go, I pitch up and then I roll right and that will make me do a little bit of a spiral. That will help me lose speed and you can also just shoot your gun to lose speed because the recoil is pretty high on this 20 millimeter. And when you're right below 500 kilometers an hour, you can just put out your gear and it won't break. And then you can just set it down and your parachute will handle the rest. If it comes out right about under 300 kilometers an hour and you're good. All right, so we just all repaired at the same time and we are ready to get back out there to kill, let's see. We only got two enemies left. One of them is a MiG-21 best, but we should be fine to go and take it. It looks like I am the only F-104 here that is fully spaded because I'm accelerating faster than everything else. So let's just get off the ground, take off our flaps, and get going. Okay, so we do have the non-MiG-21 coming in here. It's an F-5. Do a quick head-on. Remember, when you are doing a head-on, like I did just there, you can go back and rewatch it. You want to start aiming a little bit lower than the aircraft. I'd say about two times the height of the aircraft is how much you want to aim under it. And then you slowly want to pull up your aim. That makes sure that if the aircraft does try to pull away downwards or if it does, um, if it is losing a lot of altitude really quickly, you will still be able to hit it while also accounting for any upwards drift it might have. So if you just do a short vertical spray, you are going to get some hits. And remember, do the little spiral right after you do the head on so you don't get hit by the other aircraft's bullets. And just also a reminder for head ons if you don't know already, shoot first. Try to shoot first. I will generally start shooting within one and a half to one kilometer. And by about 0 0.75 kilometers, I'll just pull off. It's more important that you stay alive than you getting the kill. Because if you stay alive, you can always get another kill another time. All right, so it turns out the last enemy was not a MiG-21, just another Shenyang. And I'm gonna go in for the kill here, although this is looking like a really shady angle, so I'm gonna just turn around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna hope this F-104 notices the missile, which he should. And I am rolling really weirdly, okay. Back on track here. And I'm just gonna go in right behind this F5. He is probably gonna turn into me. So I'm just gonna do another head on, except you get a missile kill. So that Shen Yang, why it died so quickly to the F104A's AIM-9B was because it turned really quickly. Uh, it, you can see it there. It was coming back towards me probably to try to head on me because it does have a slightly higher caliber gun, I think. I think it has like a, either a 23, 27 or 30 millimeter. I'm not sure about that. I'll just put that up on screen right now. So if it does get good hits, it would be able to win against me in a head-on if it knew what it was doing. But it lost all of its speed in the turn and got missile. So that's how to play the F-104 correctly. Alright, so that game was really good. And remember, main takeaways generally, um, try to stay alive as much as you can. That means staying high above the battlefield and being cautious of what's happening down below and pick and choose your fights. Don't fight something unless it's either favorable for you or you have to to help a teammate or there's just no other choice. So as you can see here, I was able to live throughout the entire game and I got two kills, one assist and a decent amount of hits. So I got nearly 12,000 RP in the game, which is pretty good and 36,000 SL, and that's with no boosters. So thank you guys for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification button or share the video. And if you did have any questions about this tutorial, remember to comment down below and I'll try to answer as many as I can as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching.